Mr. Speaker, will you please call the House to order, sir? The House will come to order. In the absence of clergy, let us pause for a moment of silence. Visitors are invited to join the members in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A quorum being present, the, the clerk will read the journal of Sunday, March. 13th, Mr. Morelli. Mr. Speaker, I move to dispense with a further reading of the journal of Sunday, March 13th, and that the same stand approved. Without objection, so ordered. Mr. Morelli. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, this uh, promises to be a busy week, and in just a moment, I'll give you a, a sense of our schedule for the day. But before I do that, I do want to uh, take us on a uh, little bit of a tour of history. Uh, things that have uh, happened on March 14th that may be of some importance and interest to members. For instance, on this day in 1794, Eli Whitney received a patent for the cotton gin, which would go on to revolutionize the cotton industry in the United States. On this day in 1923, President Warren G. Harding became the first president to file an income tax return, which had been avoided by previous presidents who claimed a constitutional provision not diminishing the post's pay protected them from paying income tax. President Harding paid roughly $17,000 on his presidential salary at the time of $75,000. And finally, on this day, 21 years ago, American astronaut Norman Thagard became the first American to enter space aboard a Russian space vehicle and is considered to be the first American cosmonaut. So with that as a little historical uh, perspective, let me um, describe our uh, somewhat busy calendar for today and what I expect will be a busy week. Members have on their desks a main calendar. There are 20 new bills on the calendar, beginning with calendar number 429 through calendar number 448. After introductions and housekeeping, we will be calling the following committees to meet off the floor today. So members should pay special attention if you are a member of the following committees. Codes, ways and means, and rules. Uh, and we will move those along with um, uh, some, uh, some uh, speed and, uh, and dispatch this afternoon. Uh, these committees will produce an A calendar. And our principal work today will be to take up budget resolution E1047 by the Speaker. This, was, this is the Assembly's budget proposal. All members should be aware that they we will be announcing additional schedule information, particularly as it relates to budget conference committees, uh, as that information becomes available today and later through the week. Majority members should be the, aware that there will be the need for a conference once our work on the floor has been completed. And as always, I will consult with my colleagues in the minority to see if they have any additional conference needs as well. So with that as a general outline, Mr. Speaker, if there, is, uh, if there are any introductions and housekeeping, this would be the appropriate time to take those up. But before we do that, um, if I might, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to have members of the Codes Committee, our first committee, uh, meet in the Speaker's conference room. I know Mr. Lentall is anxious to begin that, so members of the, com or the Codes Committee should meet in the sp Speaker's conference room, and then we can go on to housekeeping and introductions. Certainly. Codes Committee, Speaker's conference room, members at the sound of our voice, members of the Codes Committee, wherever you are, please proceed to the Speaker's conference room. No housekeeping, Mr. Morelli. We will go directly to introductions. For that purpose, Ms. Peoples Stokes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me the opportunity to interrupt your proceedings to introduce an uh, outstanding group of young men, their coaches, and their principal. They are the South Park Sparks, the Class A winners of the New York State Football League. They have been through many teams, Mr. Speaker. They are very coachable, very brilliant young men. They actually even beat Maine Inwell, who I understand was, had the longest winning streak in the history of the state. Uh, the South Park Spark changed that this year, and they are the new champions of the state of New York. So I would like for you to give them a welcome and extend them the courtesies of the floor. Mr. 
Kearns on the same topic. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it's an honor to have South Park High School today. As the Assemblywoman stated, we don't get too many visitors. They took about five hours to drive to Western New York, from Western New York, uh, to visit us in the Capitol. And when you talk about what an accomplishment uh, this team had at the Carrier Dome, I was present there, uh, 49 to 46. It was a shootout. And what a great game. And the great thing about South Park High School is when you look at their coach, Coach Tim Delaney, played at South Park in the 90s, uh, went on to become an English teacher. He's now the coach. Uh, their principal, Terry Shuda, who's with them here today, is a graduate of South Park High School. Uh, she then went on to back to her alma mater to make remarkable uh, uh, gains and, and remove them, unfortunately, from a list that they should have never been on. Uh, I know Mary Ann Dixon is also here today, uh, a teacher, uh, an administrator, and someone from the neighborhood. And these gentlemen, they did it without a practice field. They had to play on grass, and we finally got them on a turf field. We got them playing. Uh, when you talk about doing it the hard way, uh, many of these young men really, really worked hard. So for me, uh, congratulations on a 12 and one season. Congratulations on by, uh, being New York State champs. And we had the honor of uh, giving them rings. And if you look at the rings, guys, hold them up. We may never get a Super Bowl in Buffalo, but at least we got a state championship. <laughs> So on behalf of Mr. People Stokes and Assemblymember Kearns, we welcome you here, these uh, football champions, South Park, uh, to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. We commend you on both your athletic and academic achievement. I hope many of you, if not all of you who are seniors, are going on to college. And whether you play or not, you've achieved something that will be with you for the rest of your life as a sign of your ability to overcome difficult odds. So, and may understand that the score was 49-46, and did somebody kick the winning field goal out there? No, all right, well, forget that then. Congratulations, <laughs> we, are, we are so happy to have you, and please always feel free to come back and visit us. Ms. Simon, for an introduction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today. Thank you. <laughs> I rise today to introduce Dr. Marilyn Bartlett. Dr. Bartlett is here to participate as a panelist in tomorrow's Dyslexia Awareness Day activities here at the State Capitol, which I remind everybody will take place on the third floor terrace beginning at 9 a.m. Dr. Bartlett is the former Dean of the School of Education of Texas A&M University and currently heads their PhD program in educational leadership, preparing tomorrow's educators and administrators. Her interest and experience with dyslexia informs her teaching and mentorship. I first met Dr. Bartlett in 1993 when she came to me for legal representation after being denied testing accommodations by the New York State Board of Law Examiners. In what was to become a landmark case tried before a newly minted judge, now Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor. Thousands of students have, throughout America are now the beneficiaries of Dr. Bartlett's nine-year battle for equal rights, and we should recognize her for her tenacity and strength. More importantly, she's become a dear friend, and I ask you to extend the cordialities of the House. Thank you. Certainly on behalf of Ms. Simon, the Speaker, and all the members, we welcome you here. Dr. Bartlett, to the New York State Assembly, we extend to you the privileges of the floor. I hope that your time here will be helpful to all of the education efforts we pursue in this state. Please always be welcome. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Ms. Dupree for an introduction. Thank you. I'm particularly honored today to introduce the 20 leaders of the Corrections Emergency Response Teams, known as CERT, from across our great state. Before I begin the salute to the CERT leaders, I want to recognize the Central Office Administrators from the Department of Corrections and Community Super Supervision. Their presence here today clearly shows the high regard the Department has for these CERT leaders and their team members 
as they join us to extend thanks and congratulations on a job well done. Acting Commissioner Anthony Annucci, Deputy Commissioner Joseph Fellner, Associate Commissioner Robert Kennedy, Deputy Commissioner Dan Marticello, Assistant Commissioner James O'Gorman, Assistant Commissioner Patrick Griffin, and recently retired Assistant Commissioner Patricia Laconi. Although I won't be announcing them individually, I'm pleased to recognize the superintendents and deputy superintendents from all 20 of the correctional facilities who are here to also show their support and pride in the efforts of their CERT leaders and members. Now to the honorees of the day. For those who aren't familiar with CERT, they are all dedicated correction officers who volunteer for arduous additional training to respond to any situation within our prison system or communities whenever and wherever they are needed. These teams all responded to the crisis of what was considered impossible. On June 6, 2015, the escape of two murderers from Clinton Correctional Facility, Danamora, my district. Throughout the 23-day search for these inmates, CERT members work 16 to 24-hour shifts under hot, humid, often torrential rainy conditions, searching dense forests where visibility was compromised. In fact, frequently, they couldn't see more than an arm's length in any direction. They traversed through swamps and water over their knees, at times up to their chests. In some of the North Country's most difficult terrain, often without any radio communication or contact with other law enforcement agencies. In addition to the difficult terrain, and if you haven't been in the North Country in June, let me tell you, they contended with brazen black flies and ticks as these CERT members carried the overwhelming load of being in the trenches and on roadblocks. When they finally finished their deployments late at night, they were seen with duct tape on their boots, suffering from dry rot on their feet, victims of various sprains and muscle, muscle injuries, to sleep on cots in a closed prison or former school gymnasium, and ready to start all over again after just a few hours of rest. I am incredibly proud of my North Country constituents who stepped up to provide home-cooked meals, boot dryers and warmers, socks, toiletry supplies, and whatever was needed to acknowledge the courage of CERT until their job was successfully completed in the North Country, as well as the rest of New York State, neighboring states, and Canada were safe. These CERT members were boots on the ground in the North Country for all or part of the 23-day search. They all sacrificed precious time with family and friends, missing birthdays, weddings, graduations, sporting events, the comfort and love of those who were worried about them in order to protect and serve the public. I'm now going to proudly and with deep gratitude from my constituents and certainly personally from me, introduce these CERT leaders as each individual deserves recognition for his dedication and service as the leader, but also on behalf of the hundreds of CERT members across this state. I first introduce the Department of Corrections and Community Supervision Colonel Dennis Bradford, Director of CERT Operations. The two CERT leaders from the escape region, Clinton Correctional Facility, Lieutenant Darrell Menard, represented today by Sergeant Gray McCaslin. Upstate Correctional Facility, Lieutenant Steve Sauls. Albany CERT, Albany Training Academy, Captain James Noth, Field Commander, Lieutenant Carl Pierce, Team Leader. Attica, Lieutenant Thomas Monin. Auburn, Lieutenant Mark Valentino. Bedford Hills, Sergeant Dean Rabidou. Collins, Lieutenant Gary Schoenthaler. Coxsackie, Lieutenant Gerald Miggs. Eastern, Lieutenant Michael Harms. Elmira, Lieutenant John Randall, represented by Superintendent Paul Chapius. Fishskill, Lieutenant Jamie Glasspool and Lieutenant Joseph Watzweiler. Governor, Lieutenant Robert Taro, represented by Sergeant Scott Cleveland. Great Meadow, Sergeant Michael Hoy. Green Haven, 
Lieutenant Orazio Bucalo, Mid-State, Lieutenant David Stretzpeck, Mohawk, Lieutenant Stephen Otto, Augensburg, Lieutenant Kenneth Buckley, Sing Sing, Lieutenant Anthony Pontan, Wallkill, Lieutenant Gerald Gardner, Woodburn, Lieutenant William Meade, represented by Lieutenant William Hollering. As you know, we will be doing a privileged resolution at the end of session today, and each of these gentlemen and the superintendents will receive a, an engrossed copy. Mr. Speaker, I ask that you welcome Colonel Bradford and the CERT leaders in recognition of the participation by hundreds of CERT members for the tenacious, tenacious efforts of these meritorious correction officers who were instrumental in the successful conclusion of this search without injury or death to any law enforcement personnel or private citizens. Certainly on behalf of Mr. Dupree, the speaker, and all the members, we welcome both administrators, commissioner, cert team leaders, all of you uh, here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. I congratulate you on the work that you have done in order to keep our community safe. Thank you that, for that ongoing effort and wish you well as you continue your careers. Thank you so very much. Mr. Schiminger, for the purposes of an introduction. Mr. Speaker, my colleagues, uh, our theme today seems to be to honor, rightfully so, those who serve. And I thank all those who have served so nobly in their endeavors in the past few months. I have two introductions. The first introduction is of a man who serves his ministry, Reverend Bacchus. Reverend Kevin M. Backus, who was with us during our silent moment of prayer earlier. I nudged him and suggested that perhaps he should speak up, but he remained silent. <laughs> Reverend Backus is the pastor of the Bible Presbyterian Church in Western New York, a large congregation, and I would ask you to extend to you your usual warm and cordial greeting. <laughs> Certainly, uh, on behalf of Mr. Schiminger, the Speaker, and all the members, Reverend, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly, and had I known, you would have come up, and I wouldn't have had to have my moment of silence, but hopefully you prayed for us anyway. We need it all the time. Thank you so very much, and welcome here to the New York State Assembly. I enjoy, I enjoy very much standing next to Reverend Backus because it uh, makes me look tall. My next uh, person, uh, I think I'll have him stand behind me and away from me a little bit, because he also serves, but he uh, was quite well known a number of years ago when he was a star on the Buffalo Sabres hockey team. Mm. Uh, Mr. Larry Playfair played, quite fairly I might add, for many years with the Buffalo Sabres, and now is the leader of a group which serves our community of Buffalo Sabres hockey alumni. They serve our community by raising funds for charitable purposes. Uh, a couple of years ago, we in this legislature, through the leadership of Mr. Pretlow, were able to increase the size of the prizes to be awarded through their contests, their raffles, to raise more money for charitable purposes. And I'd like, Mr. Speaker, to have Mr. Larry Playfair stand. He's already on the riser behind me, uh, and receive your usual warm and cordial Greetings and thank him for the service that he and his other Buffalo Sabres alumni do in raising funds for charitable purposes in our community. Mr. Kearns on the same? No, nope. new subject. All right. Certainly, uh, on behalf of Mr. Schiminger, the Speaker, and all the members, uh, we welcome you here, sir, to the New York State Assembly. Thank you both for your playing career and the entertainment you provided us 
in that, but for your volunteer work where you are assisting the communities and those in need. And I'm often in the same position as you that is looking over Mr. Simmons's head. Thank you so very much. We appreciate it. Mr. Morelli. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I understand uh, there is at least one other introduction. Before we do that, uh, I've been advised that the Codes Committee has concluded its work, and therefore members of the Ways and Means Committee should make their way to the Speaker's Conference Room. Mr. Farrell awaits members of the Ways and Means Committee. Ways and Means Committee, Speaker's Conference Room, please proceed immediately. Mr. Kern, for an introduction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think it's Western New York Day in uh, Albany. I just want to welcome uh, West Seneca Christian and the government class, their juniors and seniors. They're here with Pastor Doug Sexton and Teacher Bob Schuler. They're up in the cheap seats. Where are you at? We've got a big crowd today, so thank you. And if you can offer them uh, the cordialities of the floor and welcome them uh, as they visit Albany. Certainly, on behalf of Mr. Kearns, the speaker, and all the members, uh, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor and let you know that in this house there are no cheap seats, Mr. Kearns. Every seat is equal because this is the house of democracy. Thank you so very much and always be welcome here. Mr. Morelli. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, members. We're going to go to page 53 of the main calendar, and we're going to begin this afternoon with calendar number 429 by Mr. Dinowitz. Clerk will read. Assembly 1161, calendar 429, Mr. Dinowitz, an act to amend the general business law. The bill is laid aside. Assembly 1795, calendar 430, Mr. Dinowitz, an act to amend the administrative code of the City of New York. 
The bill is laid aside. Assembly 1901, calendar 431. Mr. Dinowitz, an act to amend the public health law. The bill is laid aside. Assembly 1941, calendar 432. Ms. Markey, an act to amend the public health law. The bill is laid aside. Assembly 1945, calendar 433. Ms. Fahey, an act to amend the mental hygiene law. The bill is laid aside. Assembly 2285, calendar 434, Mr. Dinowitz, an act to amend the general business law. The bill is laid aside. Assembly 2921, calendar 435, Ms. Nolan, an act to amend the education law. The bill is on a motion by Ms. Nolan. The Senate bill is before the House. The, the Senate bill is advanced. The bill is laid aside. Assembly 3218, calendar 436, Ms. Fahey, an act to amend the election law. Bill is laid aside. Assembly 3375, calendar 437, Ms. Glick, an act to amend the alcoholic beverage control law. The bill is laid aside. Assembly 3908, calendar 438, Mr. Gottfried, an act to amend the alcoholic beverage control law. The bill is laid aside. Assembly 3966A, calendar 439, Mr. Wright, an act to amend the real property law. Bill is laid aside. Assembly 4106, calendar 440, Mr. Den Decker, an act to amend the vehicle and traffic law. Bill is laid aside. Assembly 6999, calendar 441, Ms. Bichat, an act to amend the election law. Read the last section. This act shall take effect immediately. Clerk will record the vote. Mr. Morelli. Yes, sir. I uh, would like to remind members that this is our first vote of the day, so folks should cast their, uh, cast their votes. And members who are still making their way to the chambers, we'd appreciate it if they'd do that quickly so they could participate in our first vote of the day. Alicia, Alicia, Alicia. We're going to guide this. 